Would you ever recognize a small public school from the outside looking in? The Catasauqua football team celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2007. Six years later, they won their first District 11 title since 1992. While Paris Marshall, Derek Bond, and Brandon Perrone celebrate their football success, the oncoming basketball preseason becomes all the more daunting. Well, we had the great run in football, and that was a lot of fun. And it did go, basketball had already started, at least practice did by the time the football players got back on the court. And the concern is always um, um, if our rhythm is going to be there and how we're going to be playing. And it showed at the beginning of the year. We didn't have our best stretch, but eventually we got used to it. We got back into basketball shape and started playing better basketball. We, every year, is, uh, and especially this year, because we had so many that played football. And um, to those kids' credit, they were going since like August, I don't know, 11th or 12th. And basically one or two days break after the MOTM right into basketball. So every year, the kids that play football and basketball and wrestling, it, it's a great thing for them to do. It takes a lot, mentally and physically. The Catasauqua boys basketball team was predicted to finish 8th in the Colonial League standings out of 12 teams. A 5-5 five five start to the regular season haunted the Rough Riders' chances at qualifying the Colonial League playoffs with heartbreaking losses to Bangor, Northern Lehigh, and Nazareth. It takes for those kids to get, a, to get back into basketball shape, again, emotionally, physically, skill-wise, how to run. It's a different type of running than in football. You know, people think kids are in shape because they play football. Well, that's not basketball shape, and it's not even close to basketball shape. And the skills, you know, Paris Marshall, and he went from catching a, a football to a basketball and dribbling, and it, it's a whole different sport, and those skills have to, you have to acclimate yourself. And we know it always takes till at least New Year's for those kids to get back into the swing of things. On January 14th, Catasauqua unexpectedly beat the undefeated Salisbury 47-45 on their home court. The upset shocked and opened the eyes of teams throughout the league. Everybody thought we were just one of those average teams, you know, like a Pinard Rule, somebody who gets a decent record, barely makes it in the districts. But we, we had to show that we were here to contend. And getting that win over Salisbury definitely proved a lot of those non-believers wrong. The win over Salisbury at home, that everyone counts out, even some of the students in our school counts out, but that was a really big win and when we won that game we knew we could do something possible. The next week, the Rough Riders began their seven game winning streak, which propelled them to the first Colonial League playoff game since 2009. The climax of the streak came against the superior 4A school, Bangor, on January 31st. We wanted to make league playoffs, we had to get we had to win four out of four games to end the season if we wanted to get in. The first game of those four being Bangor, and then on the first time we played Bangor, they beat us pretty good. Um, but go back to last year again, we got beaten pretty good by Bangor the first time we played them last year, and ended up beating them the second time around, and the same thing happened this year. So it was a big win to start that run that we had at the end of the year to get into leagues. Beating Bangor is always feeling great because their core crew, their student section, is large, playing in front of that is very fun to play in front of. But just beating Banger, knowing you beat Banger 4A boys basketball school is just a great feeling. A first round Colonial League playoff win over Salisbury meant the Ruffies would compete for their first league title since 2006. Two-way Catholic school Notre Dame Green Pond was the lone foe separating Catasauqua High School from yet another athletic milestone. A last second bucket by Notre Dame's 6'8 Vincent Eze would put Catasauqua on the losing end of a high school classic. The final shot went, went in at the horn. I looked, I saw it just go in, and my heart just sank to my stomach. And I just put my head down, and I couldn't believe that just happened. We had all the momentum going. I thought if we could have just like tipped it out or got a rebound, we would have went in overtime and got that win. But when that shot just went in, I just, I, it just crushed me. Although Silver Hardware is the opposite of what senior athletes dream of, knowing they were counted out early and nearly struck gold created golden, everlasting memories.